Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain war. This film tells the story of an FBI agent obsessed with revenge for his best friend, who was killed by a hitman. He endangers his family's safety by continuing the search. Can he get his revenge on the hitman, or will he be the one who will die in the end? Let's find out in war. War begins by showing a fight scene between two FBI police and a group of American gangsters in a port. The two members of the FBI police were John and Tom. They have known each other for a long time and have been friends for many years. Even they had considered each other as their own brothers. That night, even though John and Tom only carried out this mission by themselves, they could defeat all the gangsters in that place one by one. In the middle of the fight, John found a bullet casing that was quite unique, and it seemed that the bullet was specially made by someone. After that, Tom and John continue their action to kill all the remaining gangsters. But at the last second, John suddenly fell because of a gunshot from an assassin called Rogue. When John was almost killed, Tom quickly came and shot Rogue, causing him to fall into the sea. The next morning, John calls Tom to take Tom and his family on a picnic somewhere. Tom accepted the offer and went back into the house to tell his wife and child. Meanwhile, Rogue, who is apparently still alive, is currently preparing to kill Tom and his family as part of revenge for Tom's previous shooting. Rogue, without hesitation, immediately barged into Tom's house and shot Tom's family one by one. He then burned down the house to eliminate the evidence. A few hours later, John and his family arrived at Tom's house. Seeing the police line and several police officers around Tom's house, John began to look surprised and worried. After taking a closer look, he finally knew that now his best friend, along with the family, had died. When he inspects Tom's house, which has been burned down, John again finds the same bullet casings he found at the gangster's previous headquarters. He finally realized that the death of Tom and his family was not caused by fire but because they were killed by Rogue. The scene changes to three years later, where Rogue visits a bar home to a Yakuza gang. Without feeling the slightest bit afraid, he went straight through the place where the Yakuza gang members gathered. And not long after, he immediately executed one of the Yakuza members in another room. Other members of the Yakuza gang who heard the gunshots immediately sent their guard dogs toward the sound source. But when the dog returned to where the Yakuza gang members had gathered, the dog looked lethargic and frightened. Rogue had placed a grenade inside the dog's neck, and all members of the Yakuza gang were instantly killed by the explosion. In a dying state, one of the Yakuza gang members, who are still alive, begins to threaten Rogue, but he casually shoots him dead without mercy. Not long after that, John and other members of the FBI police came to the place and conducted an investigation. In this investigation, John again found a cartridge exactly the same as the bullet he found at Tom's house. He concludes that Rogue, the assassin, has returned, and John decides to take revenge on him for Tom's death. However, John's wife, who knows John's plan, looks disappointed and frustrated because John is too obsessed with taking revenge and sacrificing his own family. After that, John began to discuss the Yakuza gang murder case with his colleagues at the police station. He suspects that the person who killed the Yakuza gang members was Rogue. Rogue is actually an assassin who previously worked for the Yakuza gang, but he betrayed and chose to work with their rival, the Triads. The Triad gang is currently led by a man named Lee Chong, and John's suspicions turned out to be true. Rogue is currently working with Lee Chong to kill all Yakuza gang members because the Yakuza gang and the Triad gang have been sworn enemies for years. That morning, Rogue, who was meeting with Lee Chong, again received a new mission from him. He wants Rogue to take back the horse statue belonging to Lee Chong's family that the Yakuza gang stole 30 years ago. Lee Chong then ordered two of his men named Woody and Joydi to help Rogue complete this mission. Actually, they were intentionally ordered by Lee Chong to accompany Rogue so that he could keep an eye on him. However, he still doesn't seem to be able to fully trust Rogue because he has just joined his gang. The scene moves to Japan where the Yakuza leader named Shiro Yanagawa is practicing katana with one of his members. In the middle of the training, he was almost hit by a sword slash from his men. Shiro, who felt very angry, ruthlessly cut off one of his men's ears. After that, he met with his daughter named Kira to talk about the horse statue, which had now arrived in America and was ready to be auctioned. Hearing this, he asked her to immediately go to America and supervise the sale of the horse statue. On the other hand, John is currently going to the Chinatown area to meet Benny, his old friend. He then asked Benny to help him find the person who made the titanium bullet casings that he had found at Tom's house and the Yakuza headquarters. Benny then took him to his office to give him the files on Rogue that he had investigated in the past. 
Finally, he said that John could start his investigation by finding a plastic surgeon who had operated on Rogue's face. Unfortunately, the plastic surgeon is still difficult to find and is thought to be hiding for fear of being killed by Rogue. Meanwhile, Rogue, who was meeting with Woody and Joydy to discuss the theft of a horse statue from the Yakuza gang, suddenly decided to remove Joydy from his team. Rogue turns out to have hired a corrupt police captain named Andre to replace Joydy's role. Joydy, who looked annoyed, immediately spat in front of Rogue and left the place. That night, members of the Yakuza gang begin to prepare to send a horse statue to the auction site. Unfortunately, their car was stopped by several policemen led by Andre on the way. Andre ordered his subordinates to pretend to investigate the car and asked the entire Yakuza gang to line up against the iron fence. Rogue, who was monitoring from a distance, immediately ordered Woody and the rest of his men to execute all Yakuza gang members. After Rogue managed to get the two horse statues back, he immediately brought them to Li Chong. As a result of his success, Rogue received a very large fee from him. On the other hand, John and other members of the FBI police came to the place where members of the Yakuza gang were executed. One of John's police colleagues concluded that there were corrupt police officers involved in the massacre because the position of the Yakuza gang members who died was lined up like they were being searched by the police. After further investigations, John and a co-worker finally found out that the unscrupulous police officer who cooperated in yesterday's Yakuza killings was Captain Andre. Captain Andre admits that he did all that because Rogue threatened to kill his entire family. When they were about to take Andre to the police station for questioning, he was suddenly shot dead by Rogue so he wouldn't divulge Rogue's secret. John, who realized that Rogue was not far from that place, immediately ran to catch up to him. But because of his agility, Rogue managed to escape the pursuit. Meanwhile, Kira, who had arrived at the Yakuza headquarters in America, was very angry with the Yakuza members who were there for being negligent and allowing the horse statue to be stolen. The next day, John received a call from Rogue, who was using a pseudonym. Rogue tells him to come to the Triad Gang's barn if he wants the golden horse that had previously been stolen from the Yakuza Gang. Moments later, John and a group of FBI police arrived at the Triad's warehouse to conduct an investigation. But after the warehouse was opened, it had been vacated by the Triad Gang. It was all part of Rogue's plan to tease John. John, feeling very angry, points a gun at Rogue's head and again reminds him of his murder of Tom's family several years ago. John and his co-workers then left the warehouse while taking a photo of Rogue's face with his cell phone. After that, Li Chang, who was impressed by Rogue's performance, slowly began to trust Rogue and decided to appoint him as his family's bodyguard. The following night, Rogue disguises himself as a Yakuza gang member and goes to a gathering place for the Triad Motorcycle Gang. He deliberately angers the Triad Gang and lures them into the Yakuza Gang's territory. As a result, a scuffle between the Triad Gang and the Yakuza Gang ensued. After that, Rogue started killing them all one by one. Joydi, who that night joined other triad gangs, was finally killed by Rogue using a katana. Turns out, Rogue deliberately pitted the triad gang against the Yakuza gang. The next morning, when John and other FBI police colleagues conducted an investigation at the place where the triad gang and the Yakuza gang were killed, John then concluded that soon there would be a big war between both gangs. And according to John's prediction, Li Chong that day ordered Woody to prepare all members of the Triad Gang to face the Yakuza Gang and take revenge for Joydi's death. However, he warned Woody not to attack first and wait for the movement of the Yakuza Gang. Li Chong then ordered Ro to protect his family from being hurt by anyone when the war broke out. That night, unbeknownst to Li Chong, Woody and the rest of the Triad Gang began to retaliate against the entire Yakuza Gang who were having dinner at a sushi restaurant. Woody, full of anger, began to mercilessly slaughter the Yakuza Gang. Although there were several members of the Yakuza gang who put up a fight, Woody and the other Triad members were still able to defeat them. Meanwhile, John and other FBI members who had received information about the war between the Yakuza and the Triad gang immediately went to the location. After arriving at the location, they immediately secured Woody and the other Triad members. But Rogue, who was watching from the opposite building, started shooting at all the FBI members so that Woody and the other Triads could rebel and turn against the rest of the FBI. Fortunately, John managed to defeat them and began to chase the whereabouts of Rogue, who was about to escape from the location. The chase finally happened, but Rogue again managed to escape. The next day, Rogue contacted Li Chong to inform him that last night Woody and the other Triad members had attacked the Yakuza gang first. Hearing this, Li Chong seemed angry that Woody didn't listen to what he was saying. Rogue then smiled evilly because he had managed to pit Li Chong and his own men against each other. All this time, 
Rogue was still working with Shiro and deliberately pretended to betray the Yakuza gang and join the Triad gang so that he could destroy the Triad gang. After that, Kira, who met Rogue at the Yakuza headquarters, seemed amazed by Rogue's hard work. She then conveys a new mission to him to kill Li Chong's wife and children. Rogue initially refuses the mission, but he is forced to do the mission because he is threatened by Kira. Meanwhile, John came to his wife and children's house and other FBI colleagues to keep watch at his house because he didn't want Triad and Yakuza gang members to hurt his family. John's wife, who realizes this, looks angry at John because he has put his family in danger. Shortly after, Benny called John and told him that he had managed to locate the plastic surgeon in Mexico. After seeing the doctor, John finally confirmed that the photo of Rogue's face that he brought was really the real Rogue. On the other hand, Rogue and other Yakuza gang members begin to carry out their plan to kill Li Chong's family. The Yakuza gang managed to kill all of Li Chong's family guards one by one. Meanwhile, Rogue shot dead Woody and Li Chong, leaving Li Chong's wife and children. When he leaves Li Chong's house, other Yakuza gang members intend to enter and confirm that Rogue really has killed Li Chong's family. But before they could enter, Rogue immediately killed them all. He then directed Li Chong's wife and children to hide in the forest. Unbeknownst to Rogue, that night, there was an FBI member who managed to document all of Rogue's actions. After John saw the documentation of photos collected by his co-workers, he finally found out that the mastermind behind the feud between the Yakuza gang and the Triad gang was Rogue. That night, John and his colleagues then came to the Yakuza headquarters and gave all the photos of the evidence of Rogue's betrayal to Shiro. The next day, Rogue goes to Shiro to return the two golden horse statues to him. At this point, Rogue still didn't realize that Shiro already knew of Rogue's betrayal. He then showed evidence of Rogue's betrayal and immediately ordered his men to execute him somewhere. Shiro, who knew Rogue's cunning, knew that the horse statue that Rogue was carrying was fake. With his ingenuity and skill, Rogue finally managed to escape from all of Shiro's men and turned against them. He had prepared a bomb in the trunk of the fake horse statue and blew up Shiro's entire base. Shiro, still alive alone, then challenges Rogue to a duel using a katana. The action of the fight between Rogue and Shiro was very fierce, until finally, Rogue managed to make Shiro cornered. In the middle of the fight, Rogue reveals that he is not Rogue but Tom, who has managed to kill the real Rogue. Tom then deliberately performed facial surgery on his face into Rogue's face so that he could take revenge on Shiro, who had ordered Rogue to kill his family. It turned out that Tom was the one who had transferred his wedding ring to Rogue's hands and burned his house so that no one would know that the person who died was Rogue. He then performed facial surgery on his face and voice with his passport and money in Rogue's car. Hearing this confession, Shiro looked surprised. In the seconds before his death, he said that the person who had given him Tom's family address was John, Tom's best friend. Hearing this, Tom looked very angry because he thought that John had betrayed him and had killed his entire family. A few days later, John's wife received a package containing a golden horse statue belonging to Lee Chong sent by Tom. Next, Tom sent a package to Kira, Shiro's daughter, with a message to start making a new life. However, when Kira opened the package, she had no idea that the contents of the package were her own father's head. After that, Tom contacted John and asked him to meet him at a dock. John, who had arrived first at the pier, immediately had a duel with Tom, who he thought was rogue. The scuffle between Tom and John was very epic. During the fight, Tom reveals that the rogue who is currently in front of John is Tom. He then asks why John betrayed him and caused his entire family to die. John then admits that he did give Shiro the address of Tom's house because Shiro said that Rogue just wanted to beat Tom. John had no idea that Rogue would kill Tom's family too. He felt very sorry and apologized to him. However, Tom, who was very angry because his entire family had been killed, finally shot John from behind. The film closes with a scene where Tom leaves America to live a new life. The moral that can be learned from this movie is the consequences we can get if we commit betrayal. After all, betrayal is one of the characteristics of corrupt people who are widely reproached in various societies in the world. So, never betray those who have trusted you.